policy of the United States to furnish assistance to support South Vietnam for as long as is required to bring communist aggression and terrorism under control. Yeah, this is a justified war. You know, here I'm 16 years old, and uh, we got to fight for freedom. Sometime in 67, all of a sudden, they started really drafting people, and people started getting draft notices, and I think at that point, everybody started getting nervous about it. I can remember a specific conversation early 1968 where somebody asked me real directly, you know, is it worth your life, you know, to, to participate in this? Is it worth you dying? And it was, it was like a light bulb going off. We started seeing stuff coming back from Vietnam and it didn't fit with the picture that we had been raised with. There were a couple of images that you could not avoid. One of them was the, the screaming little girl with her skin burned, uh, horribly burned, running down the highway screaming. The other image I remember is uh, Vietnamese general putting a bullet with a pistol through a, a captive's head. This is like stuff that we imagine the Nazis doing in World War II. And all of a sudden, it's like, we're the Nazis. I had realized that, that it was an immoral war. All of a sudden, you start asking questions about the whole history that you've been taught. And there was this sense of incredible betrayal. Somebody flunked out of school or dropped out of school. Shortly thereafter, they got a draft notice. The Vietnam War is getting bigger, and the chances that you were going to get sucked into it were getting bigger. And I can remember being on a fishing boat and watching the FBI fly in with the Alaska State Troopers and arresting other fishermen um, who were trying to evade the draft. So there was that sen constant sense of paranoia that um, they were looking for people. The military draft uh, just put a knot in your stomach that was there all the time. And that was a horrendously stressful time to live through. I was working at a pulp mill the day I got my low draft number. I was 50 and I, I was feeding a machine that was slicing paper and I was looking at my little finger thinking, I wonder how much of my finger I'd have to take off to get out. My community had failed me and I was left to sort this out on my own because what I saw was either you were a victim or you were clever and you were part of the system that that allowed the draft to be successful and I wasn't interested in being either one of those. <laughs>